So I would like to call from the stage the Executive Director of Wikimedia Foundation, Catherine Ma. Good morning and thank you so much. Let's see if this works. Good morning. How are you all doing this morning? Is everyone awake? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, kind of. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say that I am so excited to be here today. Um, this is actually my first time here in India, and I feel very lucky to be sharing this visit with all of you. Um, I have never felt so warmly welcomed, and this has really just been a tremendous experience. I was speaking to a friend before I came and she was telling me that you never actually truly really visit India because there's no really one India to visit. Instead, you visit a city or a country because it is too big and too diverse. And so getting to know this amazing country is actually more like a lifetime journey. So I am really hoping that this is the beginning of a journey for me and the beginning of a really wonderful relationship with this community. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about our movement, uh, some of your accomplishments, some of the work that we're doing at the Wikimedia Foundation to engage with you and support you in places where we can work to support you more, and then hopefully places where you will join us in shaping the future of this movement together. So everyone here knows that our shared vision is a world in which every single human can freely share in all knowledge. In over 15 years, we've done a really tremendous job in getting started, but we do have so much more to do. And as we know, local knowledge is global knowledge, and that is increasingly true. It is part of the promise and the power of the Wikimedia movement, and it is a place where your contributions are so essential to making up to being one of those pieces that make up our whole as a global movement. We are the future of free knowledge. I believe that to, my, to the depths of my being, um, and I believe that you know, the contributions that we make here are critical in not just defining what the Wikimedia movement is, but the power of free knowledge for the world as a whole. We're something of a shining light in that regard. And so let's build it together. Um, together in this room, you all bring knowledge and perspectives from so many different geographic, cultural, and linguistic communities. And that is part of that component that makes us so much stronger than our individual parts. What does it take to build it together? Oh, did we lose the, oh no. Okay. Um, so I was asking what does it take to build it together? And I would say that it really starts with our shared values, um, a belief in our shared commitment to the values of freedom and openness in all of the ways that those are defined, the values of accessibility, equality, and independence, the importance of transparency. But in particular, for the conversation that we're having here today and the conversation that I think we need to have as a movement, oh, excuse me. And the conversation that we should have as a movement is the value of diversity and inclusivity. So that means the value of many different perspectives and recognizing that we all bring different perspectives and celebrating them for their differences. Making it a, a commitment to inclusivity and space for all of those perspectives. And I want to recognize the work that the conference organizers have done in this regard and celebrate them for it. They have done a remarkable job in making this a truly inclusive and diverse space. From more than 100 scholarships that have increased participation from people who would not otherwise be able to attend, to an emphasis on ensuring that women are represented with 25% of those scholarships, and the outstanding code of conduct for the conference that was mentioned earlier this morning. Congratulations. So it starts with you and the shared values that we have. Someone reminded me earlier that in India there is 
one Wikimedia volunteer for every million people, which truly makes you one in a million, which is pretty special. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and that is, I think, a reminder that when you find people who are one in a million, that we should invest in them invest in you because you are the future of our movement. The impact that you make is very real. And I want to talk a little bit about some of those impacts. We've had an edit-a-thon ongoing since we've arrived at the conference with the goal of adding and improving articles in Punjabi. Already more than 2,200 articles, 2,000 200 articles have been created or improved at this multilingual event. That is remarkable. Congratulations. <laughs> Earlier this year, we saw the first ever Wikimedia open source hackathon at the Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee. And I want to thank the efforts of Tony Thomas in making that possible and introducing the power of Wikimedia, or, sorry, Media Wiki and open source to a new community of potential contributors. Wikipedia Asian Month uh, is a relatively new project in this community. We're actually going to have a session later today talking about how you can get involved. As part of Wikipedia Asian Month, which is broader than just the Indian community, it's all of the communities across Asia with a strong participation, including Chinese Wikipedians. Um, several Indic communities participated in promoting the importance of Asia in the Wikimedia movement and on Wikipedia. Hundreds of articles were written, and the Malayalam community in particular deserves a special recognition for they were particularly active in this month. I want to recognize the work of the Tamil community with the collaboration with the Tamil Virtual Academy. Uh, they were able to work together with this government, government institution to increase participation and contrib contribution to Tamil Wikipedia. An effort earlier this year in Bangalore, a four-day event, Training the Trainer, organized by the Center for Internet and Society Access to Knowledge Program, brought together when many Wikimedians from across this community to develop leadership skills. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about leadership later and why developing leaders in our community is so important. I also want to recognize a very important milestone for Audio Wikipedia and the Wikisource and Wiktionary communities. Happy 14th birthday. A reminder that our movement as a whole is 15 years old, which means that Odia, the Odia community has really been a part of this movement since the very beginning. Congratulations on all that you have achieved. And I am very excited to make a special announcement. We just spoke about one of our oldest communities and congratulations and welcome to one of our newest communities. The Tulu Wikipedia has gone live as of this weekend. I am very happy to announce that this is a project that has been under um, progress since 2014, and I especially want to recognize the volunteers who've been responsible in making that happen including Dr. Vishvana um, and Bartesha A. Thank you so much for your contributions. So many of you are, are getting to know each other here at this conference. Many of you have known each other for some time. Many of you probably are familiar with the Wikimedia Foundation and some of the work that we do. But I also know that for some of you, this may be the first time you're getting to know the foundation and how it supports and works with the community. And so I want to speak a little bit about this because collaboration between the foundation and the communities is a really critical part of what we do at the Wikimedia Foundation. And part of why we are here is to learn about how we can support you and your efforts 
better in order to truly make uh, make sure that you have the resources to survive, I'm sorry, not to survive, to thrive and grow in your communities. So the Wikimedia Foundation is based in San Francisco, California, as many of you probably know. The Wikimedia Foundation is about 13 years old, so we joined the Wikimedia movement after Odeo Wikipedia. <laughs> Um, we provide a number of support functions to the Wikimedia movement. You may be familiar probably with two of the bigger uh, functions that we provide. The first is, of course, maintaining the Wikimedia projects and keeping them up and running and online. That includes development of technology, um, ensuring that you have access to things uh, like language support, the development of new projects to make Wikipedia more accessible on mobile, um, maintaining the servers themselves, but of course other things as well. The community engagement team, which provides support and resources for community members around the world. Their support comes in many different uh, in many different categories. It includes support for user groups and chapters. It also includes support for individuals through grants, uh, trainings, capacity development workshops, and more. They work on Wiki with our community members to increase participation in software development, support our volunteer technical contributors, and to make sure that the Wikimedia projects are a safe and welcoming space for participants. We also provide a number of other functions for the Wikimedia movement. We provide legal and financial support, including defending our editors around the world when necessary, um, and ensuring that content on the Wikimedia sites is protected. We provide communication support. There'll be some workshops later today with uh, some training on how to tell better stories, how to work with the press to help them understand our movement. And of course, we do fundraising. Uh, fundraising is a critical part of what allows us to support the Wikimedia projects. Many of you probably know that we are supported by two and a half million people every year on average. And those two and a half million people come from around the world and give an average contribution to the Wikimedia projects of about $15. So we're truly a global movement, not just in terms of our contributors on Wiki, but also our contributors who support the projects and make them possible. So that is just a quick introduction to who we are for those of you who are learning about us for the first time. And hopefully many of you are already familiar with the Wikimedia Foundation. So I want to talk a little bit about what we are doing in particular to support this community and how we can support this community better. For example, we have recently started projects around community capacity development which is an experimental new initiative that works with our communities to identify their needs. So areas where you feel as though you would like to learn new skills or work on developing a certain capacity. Um, earlier this year, Asaf Bartov, who many of you know, came, I believe, to Chennai to work on training on tools um, for the Tamil Wikimedia community. So building technical skills and providing in-person training on bot building, wiki data, and other technical wiki tools. We've have been working to improve our language support across the Wikimedia projects, in particular support for our index scripts. Some of the things that we have been working on over the course of this year and are going to continue to invest in are improving search across the projects so that index scripts are easier to work with and it is easier to find the incredible content that you are creating. The content translation tool, which we introduced earlier last year, is still in beta on most Wikimedia projects, but it has hit a milestone with 100,000 articles being translated from one Wikimedia project to another. Um, we would like to encourage you in your communities to think about how the content translation tool can help you grow your Wikimedia projects, but also it is a great way of introducing new editors to how to edit Wikimedia. The expanded use of our translation <laughs> extension across 
Meta and other locations to broaden the Wikimedia Foundation's communications and improve our ability to communicate with people who speak English either as a second language or don't speak English at all. We recognize that as an organization based in San Francisco, we often communicate in English as our dominant language, and investing in our content translation tool is a way to improve not just communication from the Wikimedia Foundation to communities, but also communication from uh, between communities that speak different languages. And I also want to highlight that we are experimenting with new options for optical source, optical character recognition, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later today in an afternoon session, focusing on how optical character recognition can support Indic languages in places like Wikisource, so that we can continue to expand and grow the engagement with other Wikimedia projects beyond Wikipedia and grow new communities in this area. And I encourage you to attend those sessions. I also want to talk a little bit about our new readers initiative. We're going to be hearing more about this later today in a session right after this. The new readers initiative is something that we're very excited about. Historically, you're probably most familiar with the way that the Wikimedia Foundation has worked to support the Wikimedia contributor community, editors, photographers, creators. What we are now looking at is how we can also support new readers from areas of the world where access to the internet may be high or growing, but participation and awareness of the Wikimedia projects is not as high as we would like it to be. And we have identified a few critical countries where we would like to improve the support. We're excited to say that India is one of these countries, and particularly looking at a couple of different languages and how the needs of those readers in those languages may be different. We don't view this India as one monolithic place, but they're a place where we need to be thinking about the differences and sensitive to those differences in different communities. So I hope that you'll be able to attend that session as well, because I think there will be some very interesting insights into the way that readers engage with the incredible content and knowledge that you are sharing. Combined, these countries represent nearly 2 billion people across the planet. As we know, our mission is to share, make sure that everyone can share in all knowledge. Currently, we know that about half a billion people visit the Wikimedia projects every month. So we certainly have a lot of work ahead of us, and we're really excited about what this new Readers project might mean for continuing to achieve our vision. There's a lot of people coming online, and they're growing, the internet access in these areas is growing 10% every year. We see this as a fundamental commitment by the Wikimedia Foundation to the importance of the, this region, this nation, and making an investment in reaching more people as part of our mission. One of the other things the Wikimedia Foundation is working on this year is community health and ensuring that our projects are safe and inviting and welcoming places for everyone to participate. This is particularly important as we want to grow participation in our projects and open participation to people whom we have not yet reached. Women are a major part of this, but not the only part. It is important that the Wikimedia projects are a welcoming place where people feel as though they have a role to play. Here at this conference, I believe you probably all feel very welcome. There are friendly faces, we get to know each other, we share meals, we share experiences, we share knowledge. At the end, we leave with new friends. In-person meetings are some of the most powerful things that we can do to grow our community and grow this movement and a sense of belonging and power However, our projects do not always feel so welcoming, and this is going to be a major priority of the Wikimedia Foundation, to replicate the sense of community that we feel in this room on our projects and make sure that everyone knows that when we say anyone can edit, we really mean that anyone can edit. I'm also excited to share with some of the work that the Wikimedia Education Program is doing. 
I look forward to growing our participation between the Wikimedia Education Program and these com your communities. We have active programs, as you know, earlier today, or I'm sorry, yesterday, we announced a uh, letter of intent with the Chandigarh Group of Colleges to introduce an education program here. We see that as a major opportunity for increased participation and understanding of this movement. Uh, we also know that there are others who have been doing great work in this area, including at Christ University through the activities of the CIS group and across the region in Nepal and in Bangladesh and more. So we'd like to encourage continued engagement and I encourage you, if you have not yet met Ty Flanagan, who is here from the Wikimedia Foundation, to please find him and to learn more about what you can do in partnership around education. But back to that one in a million. I want to talk a little bit about the future of our movement and how you can play a role. Your voices matter. I know it's easy to say that, but I really want to emphasize it. The voices of, these, of your communities are important and critical to the future of our movement. The voice of your community as a whole, representing this incredible community here in India, your individual voices, representing your own thoughts, your own experiences, and your own perspectives that may have nothing to do with your membership as a um, within the India community, but may represent your single individual perspective as a member of the movement, your membership in your own individual language community or project. All of these are different perspectives, and all of these are important perspectives. Each of you has many perspectives to share, and, <laughs> and I want to encourage all of you to know how much your voice matters to this movement and how much your voice matters to us at the Wikimedia Foundation. What does that mean in practice? Oh, this slide was supposed to be earlier, I'm sorry. <laughs> We want to work to grow the next generation. <laughs> Are these the right teams? <laughs> we want to work to grow the next generation of Wikimedia leadership. The Wikimedia Foundation this year will be investing in leadership development programs, identifying individuals from across the movement who bring unique voices or perspectives or have been doing exceptional work. And we want to work with you to develop your capacity and skills so that you are more than a contributor, you are a leader in your community, and you have a voice in the global movement. The global movement is something that is great and diverse and large, but I think many of us recognize that historically it has grown differently in different parts of the world. And I feel as though this is an opportunity for us to recognize the importance and power of this part of the world, this group of communities, in defining the future of our movement. And I want to make a specific reference to the importance of leadership, not just in your communities, but leadership overall in the movement and encourage you to become involved in movement governance. Now, the language of movement governance does not sound exciting. I know that. It maybe sounds a little bit bureaucratic. I, you know, you as individual contributors may look to your own communities and say, I have a lot to do here. But I encourage you to understand and get to know the way that the Wikimedia movement is governed at a global level by diverse individuals and volunteers all over the world. We have a number of committees and opportunities uh, that you can become involved in, from the Funds Dissemination Committee, which uh, is responsible for our resources, our financial resources, and how they are allocated globally, to the Affiliations Committee, which is responsible for recognizing new user groups, and recognizing and engaging with chapters, and thinking about the future of what movement organizations mean to the Wikimedia movement. And above all, to the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees, I want to recognize that currently we do not have anyone from this part of the world in the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees, and that is a hole in 
at the top of our movement because there is nobody to represent the perspectives and experiences and needs of this community. So while that may seem very far off that we could, to join the Board of Trustees, I encourage you to think about what you can do as individuals to become more involved in movement governance because we would love to see leadership from your communities represented at all levels of this movement. These different bodies are important for determining the way that our movement grows, the way that we allocate resources, the way that we are represented to the world, and the choices we make about strategy. The Wikimedia Foundation is here to help you understand these opportunities and help you take advantage of them. So if all I do today is plant a seed in your minds about how you can continue to take leadership in our global movement, I feel like that is an important enough accomplishment because I really am looking to you as part of the future of how this movement continues to grow in our next 15 years. And about the next 15 years, we are 15 years old today as a movement. And I think many of us recognize that we have accomplished more than we ever thought possible in our wildest dreams. There is an expression that I love, that it is such a good thing that the Wikimedia projects work in practice because they would never work in theory. And that is, a, to me, a perfect encapsulation of how remarkable and improbable our global movement is and how special and important we are to the world. So in 15 years, when we look back, what do we want to have accomplished? We know 15 years in that we have accomplished a tremendous amount, but we have so much more to do. As I said earlier, Half a billion people visit our projects. That is remarkable. Almost nobody has that sort of impact on the world. But that's only half a billion people. That is half the population of this nation. We have so much more work to do. So what will we do over the next 15 years? The Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees has asked the Wikimedia Foundation to engage this year in a process of thinking about the future strategic vision of the Wikimedia movement. And when I say vision, I don't mean the vision. We know what the vision is. The vision is a world in which every single human can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. That is the vision, and that vision will always be our vision. But what is the vision that we have for the movement over the course of the next two years, three years, 10 years, 15 years? Who do we want to be in the world and how do we want people to understand us? Do we want to be represented in every community, every school, every language? Do we want to be partnered with every educational institution or major museum? I don't know. These are great questions. There are probably questions that I have not asked and that is why I want you to all participate in this process of determining our strategy. What does that mean in practice? Over the course of the next few months between now and November, I will be working at the Wikimedia Foundation to develop a proposal for a strategy process. A strategy process that will engage our global movement and all of our major stakeholders. I'll be talking about this process with you on Wiki, where you have opportunities to give feedback to the best way to do this process, whether it is on Wiki consultations or in-person gatherings or seminars, I honestly don't know. It's part of determining and building a process that works for all of us. And it may work differently in different communities around the world. In November, I will share this with our Board of Trustees. And after receiving their feedback, we will start in the beginning of 2017 as a global movement to talk about our future. And I want to emphasize how important it is and encourage and invite you to be active members in this strategy process. As I mentioned earlier, it is not just as representatives of Wikimedians in India or Wikimedians in your language communities, it is as representatives of all of those things, but also your personal vision for what the Wikimedia projects can be. I am so excited for what we will come up with together. I am so excited for what these incredible minds in our movement can do. 
you have done a thing that nobody thought was possible. You built Wikipedia. So I'm really looking for the impossible thing that comes out of your brilliant minds next. It's going to be remarkable. I look forward to sharing more information about it soon. So I want to encourage you to join us, as I said. This is my, I know I mentioned this open hand yesterday, but I find it so powerful that this is the symbol of the city here and the conference here today. As I mentioned, the designer of the open hand, uh, the architect Le Corbusier, believed that it was a peace, symbol of peace and unity. But he also believed that it was a symbol of the power to give and to receive. And in that, I believe, is, defines what we do as this movement. We give knowledge and we receive it around the world, among each other, and to others who may never know what, never meet a Wikimedian whose lives we will impact and change. So I encourage you all to give and receive and to continue to give and receive today at the conference when you go home to your home cities and communities as part of the strategy process and as part of the global movement. So now I'm going to, I believe we have a little bit of time for q and A. I I want to make sure that we stay on time because I know we got started a little bit late. But I want to say thank you so much for your participation in this conference. I'm looking forward to the next time that we all get together. I hope it's not in five years, but I think that that is up to you to determine. Um, I believe that we have so much more to do together and I'm really open to the questions that you might have. Thank you so much. So how are we doing in Q&A? Is just people stand up and ask questions? Is that the best way? All right. If you have, do we have microphones? I see Harriet up at the top. Do we have other questions? We have other questions. Is Wikipedia got any initiatives in the microphone a oh, I just want to know uh, your new initiative, uh, especially on uh, those communities, the less than uh, one million of kind of things, because we have nearly two to three hundred in India. Uh, we don't have any, uh, what you call it, uh, we don't have any wiki pages for them. We have all that in, like, what's the initiative? You said 2016 is the, you're going to be Indian focused, right? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I think it's actually the audio, the acoustics. I'm just having a really hard time hearing you. No, I, I just want to know what your next step in India for a micro level. So we have a very small communities with uh, two to three million people. Okay, uh, so what, what's your focus on those communities? Uh, new languages and how we can continue to support them. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we want to preserve the diversity of those languages. Mm -hmm. uh, as of now, we don't. I mean, they, these people don't have much platform to explore. Uh, definitely, we keep um, platform like Wikipedia. Actually, they, they give more uh, weightage to explore themselves. I see. So, uh, if I understand the question correctly, and you can please continue to ask clarifying questions. Um, what we, the approach that we are taking right now around how to support communities that are what we are calling emerging communities, which means it is not based on where they're located in the world. It's based on how many contributors they have relative to, the, to their size, for example. Um, that could be in Australia, that could be here. The idea is smaller communities of contributors and how we support smaller communities because their dynamics are different than larger communities. So Asaf, um, whom I'm sure many of you have met, is our point of contact and program officer for emerging communities. And so I would certainly encourage you to speak to him um, about what concerns you might have so we can think about how we can respond specifically to the needs of your community. But I can speak in general to say that someone asked me yesterday, what's the strategy 
for these communities? What's the strategy for smaller languages? And really my response was, that strategy is something that we will probably need to work on together as part of the strategy process. But in terms of the approach that we are currently taking, is we're very much looking to follow the lead of existing communities. So as communities grow, as they change, sometimes as they shrink, the Wikimedia Foundation wants to be in constant communication with you about what your needs are at a given point in time so that we can allocate resources appropriately, whether that is in-kind resources, whether that is through grants, whether that is through workshops and training, um, so that we can continue to adjust and be really responsive to the unique and special needs that different communities have. So we don't necessarily have a strategy for some of the smaller communities or smaller languages, because that I think is part of that conversation around, you know, do we want to have a Wikimedia project in every language in the world? I don't think we've ever said that that is necessarily a goal of the projects. We've always said that we want to support all knowledge and then follow the lead of communities as they say, we want a Wikipedia, or we want to work on a Wiktionary, or we want to work on a wiki source, and really allowed community members to tell us what their priorities are. And so I think we'll continue to do that for the foreseeable future. Is, does that answer your question? We can also speak later if, if that's easier. Other questions? Oh, sorry. I'll put Harriet and then we'll come down here. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Harriet. Uh, this is not a question, it's just for the record. And it's kind of a follow-up on the gentleman's point about small languages. Um, for some reason, while I'm delighted to see all the languages celebrating the anniversaries, the fact is that the, Go the Vice Chancellor of the Goya University made the largest donation of an encyclopedia to Wikipedia. And uh, that was, I think, was it a year ago or so? And, uh, Konkani, which is an uh, official language of India, became one of the new languages. Sadly, it doesn't have um, an active community, partly because it's a language that is written in five scripts, the Romi, the Devnagari, the Kannada, Malayalam, and Persia Arabic. And we do recognize that uh, maybe the way to go forward, talking to us, Africa, talking to somebody yesterday, that uh, maybe we should make it as more in terms of wiki source and dictionary. There was a dictionary donated through CIS. I don't know if anyone here from CIS. Two or three months ago, we had a donation of a dictionary which is supposed to go on wiki source. But for some reason, it's just gone below the radar. So I just wanted to make a point about that. Thank you. Thank you. Is that also a call to members of the audience who might want to become involved in supporting the language? Maybe. <laughs> if there are any Konkani speakers in the room, I'm sure. I know Harriet has been working very hard to support uh, this particular language, and so if you've not yet met her, please introduce yourself. Um, Um, any other questions? I just know there was a question here and a question up there. Do you have the microphone? Go ahead to you next and then we'll come to you. Oh, just one second, sir. Thank you. This is Sumita from Bengal Wikipedia. I want to know, is there any facilities how uh, full blind can read any uh, Indic wiki pages? Like there is text to speech converter, but we have to incorporate, like cursor will be within word. Then they can with right arrow, uh, give reading with audio, they can read all the pages in any any languages. With simple uh, modification, they can read. Uh, so I'm going to repeat to see if I understood your question. You were asking about whether there's a text to audio converter that we are working on, or no? I have suggestion uh, if the technical team can do this thing, that will be beneficial to all full blind in India and any other language. To text to speech converter, yes, it has, uh, it has to be the cursor in between words. So with right arrow key, they can read all the pages, one word by word. For full blind, 
visually impaired person. So I think, I'm sorry, and I do think it's, apologies, I think it's the acoustics because you'll see that the, um, the speakers are facing you, and so you're hearing your question, but I'm not really hearing your question very well, so my apologies. But I think that what you're asking about is the text to audio converter, and what I believe is that the technology for this exists and is in use in, in certain wikis, um, and it's really a question of incorporating it within your like, language community or language wiki, um, and that is, and it also, as Asaf is just reminding me, it also depends on licensing. So um, that's probably a great question for the hackathon, it might be a good place to start. The hackathon is going on throughout the course of the conference, and I would love it if hackathon organizers are here in the room and could raise their hands, so that perhaps that would be a good point of contact. Do we have a hand raised down here? Yes, Santosh is over here maybe would be a good place to start to talk about how that might become possible or if that is possible um, for, for your community. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, one second, we've got a question here and then I'll go to you. Uh, in fact, uh, my uh, question and partly observation, which I want to share, is the about uh, the integration of uh, Wikipedia with the governance. Uh, I have gone through your profile in the World Bank and I read the PDF uh, in which you contributed the mobile governance, related governance. I feel that uh, at till date, uh, government sector which affects the large amount of public is at the periphery from the point of view of Wikipedia. Uh, they should be brought in the mainstream. Uh, I think while preparing some strategy for future, a specific focus should be given how to bring the government sector in the Wikipedia mainstream. And uh, it can play a greater role even in development, uh, even I think in uh, a project like GLAMS, and while preparing strategy, after preparing and finalizing strategy, the government should formally be intimated about the potential of uh, utilizing this media. Uh, I think that government are not so sensitive about these things. They have to be intimated formally. So this is my observation. Thank you. Just a comment in response to your observation about the role that governments can also potentially play. They, what we have seen in many different governments around the world is that they are tremendous producers of knowledge um, in many ways, whether it is data sets about census, for example, census information, whether uh, I think a very famous one that is very popular on Wikimedia Commons are all the images from the different space agencies around the world uh, that are usually public domain, or at least in the case of NASA, I know the European Space Agency is also working to increase uh, its release of images. So absolutely, I think that there is a role for us in terms of participation. What I think we can certainly think about that in course of the strategy for the movement overall, but we shouldn't, we don't have to wait for the strategy, is what I would say. One of the great assets about having our affiliates around the world is that whether you are a user group, a thematic organization, or a chapter, those are excellent structures to have conversations with government at the local level, at the municipal level, and then in some places, um, in other parts of the world, certainly we've seen at the national level as well. Um, so whether it is our colleagues at Wikimedia Israel that have been having conversations about donations of the archives there, in the United States we have a partnership with the National Archives, and there are similar examples. <coughs> the Armenian community works very closely with the Armenian uh, government around encouraging participation um, through education, for example. So. I do believe that we potentially have, potentially have many opportunities there, um, but we also don't have to wait for strategy. If you see an opportunity in your community through your important institutions, government or cultural institutions that are you know, national institutions, whether it's libraries or museums, by all means, we encourage you to explore it, take advantage of it, and if it gets to a point where you see the need for support from the foundation, come to us and we're happy to think about how we can support that. So it's a great observation.
we're going to go there, and then we're going to come to Sunny. So, um, when you talk about training a movement strategy for next decade, so do you see South Global and North Global differently? Will it be a different plan or will it be part of one single plan? Because uh, what has happened uh, in the last 10-15 years is very different in North Global and South Global. So, will you be seeing in that way or will it be a one single movement plan which is going to be framed for both the, like, uh, across the globe? Um, so, if I repeat your question back and hopefully you can help correct me if I'm getting it wrong. One of the things that you asked is around movement strategy going forward. Will it be a single plan for the whole world or will it be more nuanced in terms of approaching different places differently? Is, correct, that, correct, is correct, that correct? correct. I think that's up to us, is my honest answer. I think one of the things that the foundation has recognized is that one plan to rule them all is not really very effective. Um, we have seen that we have taken different approaches to movement strategic planning in the past. Some of them have worked better than others. I would say that increasingly we are recognizing that we need to work with individual communities to determine what the right approach for that community is and then allocate resources accordingly. When I think about the future of the movement strategy, I think what we really want to think about is at a high level, where do we want to be? And then in terms of how we apply that, whether it's here in India or whether it's in Argentina or whether it's in Germany, the tactics and the approaches and the goals are probably going to be different. But my, my belief, personal belief, is that it's going to have to be more nuanced in order to be effective so that we are thinking about the specific needs of communities here in India as different from the needs of a community in Germany, for example. But I encourage you, the more that we can uh, have your participation in that conversation, the more your voices will be heard. Um, historically, we have heard a lot of participation from our communities in Europe and in the United States and other English-speaking communities, and those have been very influential in understanding uh, and determining and shaping movement strategy. So I would love to hear strong voices from this community acknowledging what your needs are and what your challenges are so that other members of the movement can hear you and begin to understand the context in which you work so that we can also think about how does the movement grow and change and evolve here as well as how does it work in, in, in Europe, for example. Uh, hopefully, good morning. I appreciate your clear presentation. Uh, I'm representing Urdu Wikipedia. And uh, fortunately, Urdu Wikipedia is running ahead of all Indic languages. Now it is ahead of this thing, this first thing. Uh, again, unfortunately, it is being represented by Bajmil Sahab, this one of us. And altogether, only four or five Wikipedians uh, whose scouting can be taken with one hand. Mm -hmm. The major portion of contributors are left behind in Pakistan. Unfortunately, they are unable to come over here because of Don Vidaranta. That is already a base about South Summit, which is likely to come, hopefully, it is coming forward. Mm -hmm. Here, the grassroots level, the gentleman was asking a question from that side. Uh, my suggestion is here there are two groups. One is a, a group with knowledge, that is, the professors, teachers, scholars, like that. Uh, the other group is uh, technical, technically well uh, bestowed group, that is, all of youngsters. Mm -hmm. The gap we had to reduce. So, hopefully, if you are doing this gap, already have talked with Mr. Tai. Uh, under education program. Uh, since I was suspect for only one year, I know little. I am learning my level best. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, some of my come to rescue. Hopefully. CAS already has prepared, I express thanks for uh, CAS uh, during training. If this gap, yeah, to reduce this gap, myself on my own without any knowledge, I already have done that outreach programs around nine universities. Mm -hmm. Thereupon, the professors are not having any technical knowledge. They are afraid of it. It's a phobia. They, they are afraid of this thing. Yesterday also, uh, two uh, principals were uh, discussing. They were having apprehensions. They were having some kind of, they are telling that Wikipedia is less nothing. They were telling in low eyes. These gaps to reduce this, to what foundation can do these days? The, the technical gap between this and subjects. There is one suggestion is there. 
So if you are taking help of scholars who are technically very well enough mm -hmm. and joining the professors, so something may take it. This is a suggestion. And one, one, one small thing, uh, in this group, there is a 78 years old person in there, 17 years old man in there. It must be recognized by foundation especially. Let me in one way, let me do one photograph. It will appreciate. I think uh, that's a great suggestion. Um, uh, <laughs> um, but I, and I appreciate you recognizing the diversity of our participants here today and age as well. Uh, I think that to your suggestion and in your question about what the foundation can do, I'm excited that you're speaking with Ty and I am excited that you pointed to us off. I think those are the right people to start the conversation with. As I was saying earlier in response to um, one, an earlier question, around support for smaller languages. My belief is that, and I believe the foundation's approach is that we really want to follow the lead and the needs that you identify within your community. And so having conversations with people at the foundation whose role it is to support these efforts through education or emerging communities is the best place to start. And then one thing that we're very committed to is when we see successful projects, thinking about how we can document them so other communities can learn from your experiences so that successful approaches can become regional approaches or global approaches as appropriate. Um, Sonny. I think the mic is off. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. So basically, like my question is something that uh, quite a few people might also be having. So. Like from my experience on the English Wikipedia, we have like a lot of brilliant proposals and suggestions from users, but they are all lost because you know they don't know the appropriate place to say it. Like they don't know that there's a village form that exists or something like that. So similarly, in this community, like the people here and like throughout in Indian Wikipedians and like the Indian communities, there are a lot of people who are not that proficient with communication, who are not that well aware of what uh, are the various official avenues for the foundation and uh, like some of them are not a very proficient with communication and like the in English speaking skills itself. So like those uh, communities and Wikipedians, they have, they often come up with very amazing suggestions, they have sometimes needs, they have like both communities and individuals, they have needs, suggestions and a lot of other priorities that they would like to communicate but they cannot do it effectively because, you know, there is no simple enough channel for, so to say. So is there any way that, you know, like, if a channel exists already, then that's amazing, but if it doesn't exist, can there be a simple way that, you know, we can have an open channel with the foundation or at one place that is simple enough for everyone? I think this is a, is a great question. I want to highlight a couple things and then I want to, Asaf has some ideas. So. It is an issue that has come up repeatedly, is with all of our wikis, where does one start? Um, I think there's also some ownership that the foundation has, which is that historically we have not been so good at telling and sharing with communities what we are good at. Um, and it, because of that, people may have different understandings of what the foundation does do or what it doesn't do, and may be aware or less aware, unfortunately, of some of the resources that exist. So we recognize that we also own the responsibility of communicating better around what resources exist. One initiative that has recent, that is a goal for us this year, that's in our annual plan, is around creating a, um, I don't want to call it a hub, but a place where resources are accessible and available that is in one location that is easier for community members to find. That is not necessarily the same thing as what you're saying, which is what's that one place that community members can make suggestions, but it's an experiment to see if we become better as, an, as a foundation at centralizing information, will that be a, um, a model for how we might be able to work more effectively with community members. Another thing that I want to recognize for those of you who may not be aware is particularly around contributions, technical contributions, is that the foundation has also recently done work to improve technical collaboration with the community. And I want to recognize two, two areas in particular that are underway. The first is what do we call the community tech team and the community wish list 
which is a project to identify high priority needs from community members around tooling or gadgets or other things for contributors who are really looking for specialized ways to improve their workflows or to be able to contribute more um, effectively. And what they have done is they have requested all of these different needs from community members and then there was a process of prioritizing with the community. We did that for the first time last year. So far it has been very well received. The community tech team has been working with community contributors, developers, to, um, to work on some of these issues and have made significant progress on a number of them. At the same time, they recognized that because it was a voting exercise, some smaller communities didn't have their needs represented. And so going forward, the community tech team is looking at how can smaller communities also make sure that their needs are prioritized. So two things, community resources, centralizing where we share those, and the community tech team as a place to bring some of your technical concerns or needs, particularly into that wish list process. So those are two things I want to recognize. Oh, and also we're uh, working on what we're calling technical collaboration guidelines, which are an, a way of documenting how the Wikimedia Foundation builds technology so that community members who want to take part in that know the process for doing it and what places they can best contribute to make sure that that is a collaborative process between foundation and community members. But I've said those three things, and now I want to make sure that Asaf has something to add around <coughs> church. Uh, so uh, Catherine spoke mostly about our channels, what we already offer. I want to focus on the part of your question that was about people who can't use those channels, even though they exist. Um, and my answer to that, some people are not able to articulate their idea or their concern in English. Other people maybe are not able to articulate their idea at all. They just have difficulty explaining what they mean, but it may still be a good idea. Um, my answer to that is, first of all, you can help. You have excellent English. You can help people with less excellent English. And that goes for all of you. You can all be the conduits in your respective communities. If you know about a, a correct channel and you see someone kind of pointlessly posting about it somewhere ineffective, you could tell them, hey, if you post it here, it'll get noticed, or I'll help you rephrase this, or fix your spelling, or whatever. Uh, so each of you can actually help uh, those who are either less informed than you, less articulate than you, uh, or don't speak English. Uh, the foundation, unfortunately, is basically only able to communicate in English, um, with some uh, exceptions. And um, the other thing though, uh, perhaps more immediately useful to you, is I'm Asaf, and you're all welcome to just talk to me, whatever it is. I don't have all, hang on, I don't have all the answers, but I know where to get them. So just, if you have a question or an idea or a problem, reach out to me and I will be your switchboard. I will help you find the answer you need. It may not mean that you don't have to do some work. I may point you at Fabricator and tell you, go file a ticket there, but I will help you find that effective channel uh, to, get, um, to get your help. Thanks, Asaf. And I, I like this vision of a world where we have all the answers, Asaf. That's, I'm, not, I'm, I'm curious where, you found, where you're gonna find all of the answers. Um, the one thing I learn about this community is the longer I'm in it, the fewer answers I have. Um, I'm getting the sign that it's time to wrap up. I just, I see one more question from the crowd. I see two more questions from the crowd. Can we answer two questions and then, Ravi, do I have permission? I have permission, okay. See that, please. So, <clears throat> I think uh, one approach to getting more users on board is, I think it's very simple, it's uh, to talk to people and not ask them what can we do to motivate you, but what is, what is demotivating you and how can we remove that? And uh, like you said, I, I can help. So I've been trying to talk to the delegations, delegates here. And I've been doing an informal survey. And I would like to meet more, more of us uh, across, uh, over the next two days. And there's one more thing about channel. There are channels that the foundation knows. There are channels that people should be using. And then there are channels that people are already using. So the foundation is really good at, uh, Wikipedia is really good at maintaining a standard uh, on its articles, on its submissions. But Silicon Valley is really good at making people use technology. 
And I think regardless, regardless of what the quality of the submissions or the product might be, but if if we go by the idea of a sales channel or a user uh, or a user's channel, uh, what would you say? Funnel, funnel yeah, uh, funnel, sales funnel or a user funnel. Then there are a lot of forums which are really good for people to get started with, and then we could take ownership. If I am in, a, if I am a part of a small social network, like an offline social network, uh, where there is a lot of knowledge, instead of me telling them to come over to Wikipedia, I could just talk to them, uh, write a blog post, and then connect it to people who are already good Wikipedians, and send them the information. And then maybe at some point of time, we could automate the whole process, where I am taking a couple of WhatsApp posts, couple of links making a rough post out of it and then sending it to people who are already enjoying the process of writing articles. And I'll give a very uh, practical, a very, uh, an example from my real life. Uh, I've been wanting to write about a lot of things and I had kept that on hold because I knew it would take a lot of time. And then recently I just told myself, you know what, I'll give myself 10 minutes, I won't edit, I won't give it a second look, I'll just write down in simple sentences. And that turned out to be a really good exercise. So I have written more in bursts of 10 minutes, then trying to write entire articles. There's some sort of perfectionism element that comes in that stops us uh, if we are trying to get it right the first time. But I think these are some psychological issues uh, uh, that we could look into. And there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of possibilities. I'm very confident uh, that, you know, the second leg, going from here on, we have a lot, many, a lot more opportunities. I, th I want to just quickly respond because I think that you've raised some important issues. One is about going where users are. And there are a couple things, I think this is a thing that the foundation, I don't want to make promises because historically that doesn't work very well. Um, but, <laughs> getting some laughs. Um, but I think we're beginning to learn that it is important for us to go where users are and think about how we can meet them there. Um, I believe that we, have not yet done that so much in terms of product and feature onboarding. So when you become a new editor, for example, making that an easier process, I personally would love to see us do more of that. I think that will take time. Um, but I do believe that we're beginning to learn more about as we are thinking about how do we support communities, how do we encourage new readers, and hopefully, ultimately, we'll be able to apply these learnings to new contributors, is sitting down to listen to them as to what their needs are, and as you said, what their disincentives are. Because it's not just inviting people to come, it's understanding why they're not coming, and then thinking about how we can address those structural barriers. I also believe that we're becoming better at recognizing that a lot of community organizing takes place off Wiki, both in person, but also in other channels, conversations that happen on Facebook, conversations that happen in WhatsApp, conversations that happen in Telegram, Different communities use different channels, and we need to be more aware of that as the foundation so that we can listen better. So I want to say that I think your ideas are, are personally, on a personal level, are really interesting directionally, and hopefully we're seeing a movement from the foundation and thinking about how we can be more responsive in that way. Okay, last question over here, and then we will go to the group photo. Oh, I'm not sure it's on. Hello, I'm Naveen from Bangalore. I had volunteered as a Wikimedia India uh, secretary for uh, two years back. So I just wanted to ask about the more details on the strategy program which are going to come up for uh, also for Stretling yesterday. So we'll be planning for three years. So uh, what happened for India in the past 10 years is like earlier Jimmy came and we told we need to create a chapter. We created a chapter, then we had a strategy. We, we, then the other result, we had India programs, then moved to CIS programs, and like that. A lot of things happened in the past 10 years. So in next three years, we are going to plan for next three years. So what do you think from the, from the uh, uh, India side? What are the prior, what are the things which we should be discussing in the, like, whether it is a, we tried a Wikipedia Zero, it didn't work out in India. We tried Wiki education program in India, it didn't work out. And there are some, some things worked out, like Wiki loss. Monuments worked out, Wiki lost food worked out, and conferences, we had two conferences. So some things worked out, some things doesn't work out. So what are the things you are plan we we should be discussing about in the next three years? Um, I think that's a, 
I want to say that's a great question. One question that this actually came up to some extent at Wikimania this year. I was talking to the representatives of the chairs of the different Wikimedia affiliates around the world. Many people were in, in attendance. I believe there were about 30 chairs of different Wikimedia affiliate organizations. And they asked this question. They said, we have these organizations. Our organizations are, some of them are older, some of them are younger, um, but we really want to think about what our strategy should be. And at least in some part, we are looking to the rest of the movement and to the foundation to help up tell us where we should be thinking about going because we have the resources, we have the energy, we have the community, we really want to make it make an impact, but we don't know where that impact should be. That's a real challenge and a real question. I, I want to acknowledge that. It's come up again in different conversations in different places. That's part of why, as the foundation, we want to start the strategic discussion over the course of the next year. I recognize that different chapters and affiliate organizations are working on different timelines than the Wikimedia Foundation. And so one of the commitments that we have made, I have made, is to be able to share some of our thinking about our timeline so that you can be aware of it and decide, do you want to adjust your timeline? Do you want to continue moving forward with your timeline? Are there places where our timelines intersect in a good way that can be helpful to your planning? None of that is an answer to your question, which is what you should be focusing on. My belief is that the conversations that you are having as a leadership of a chapter should be around what are you good at? What can you do that nobody else can do? What can you do that the foundation is not doing? And what I mean by that is we all know that affiliate organizations are much better at engaging locally with their own communities, with institutions in their in their country or in their environment, things that we as a foundation can't do and it's not our role to do. So what are you best at? What is not being done? Where do you see a need? And how can you effectively serve that need and realistically serve that need? And I would use that as the baseline for planning and then think about these other aspects, whether it's education or cultural institutional partnerships or meetups or conferences, how do those fit within those questions and are they going to be effective at achieving those goals? So, and then what does that mean strategically and how, do that, how does that fit into the broader movement strategy? I think that we will all go through a process of adapting some of the work that we're doing based on the conversations we have in the next year. I hope that answers your question to some extent. Great. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you all for giving me the time and for being so patient and welcoming um, and listening and asking questions. I really enjoyed it. And I know that now we are going to go take a group photo. So we're going to go out into the courtyard and Ravi is going to give us some directions to lead us along the way. Thank you. First of all, there is an announcement for all these scholarship recipients. Uh, you can claim your reimbursements today in Block 3, ground floor. We have an office room there. Uh, you can ask the volunteers if you need help. So throughout the day, it will be open and you can go there and claim it only for the scholarship recipients. You won't be getting cash payments. Uh, you have to give uh, your bank details and you transfer it through online banking. Uh, another announcement is there is a change of room for the Global Reach Track, if you have the programs, the last track, Global Reach Track, has been shifted to the second track, like Block 9, second floor. It is just next to this building and I am sharing it, so if you follow me, you will end up there. So it is Block 9, second floor. The Global Reach Track has been shifted to that. So if you need help with other things, the Hackathon building is just besides this. You go with Santosh, left side and back side, it's the Hackathon room. And the Wikidata workshop is here, block two, the hand, the building with the hand, you can go there. So that's about the announcements. We can disperse now for the uh, group picture. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.